Hi everyone, my name's George. This is my budget-friendly non-CO2 aquascape. Really excited to give you an update. Uh, not necessarily so excited about all the algae. So uh, hopefully I'm gonna show you uh, what's caused the algae, how we defeat the algae, and how we prevent it from coming back. Okay, before I give you some close-ups of this tank, let's rewind a few weeks and I'll give you what this tank used to look like. And so you can see a, a compare and contrast. Okay, so here you can see the overall tank and it's not looking great. We're covered in BBA, uh, black brush algae or black beard algae. Um, I've done a few videos on how to treat this, so just check in the description some links. Now, there's a couple of options we've got. We can either uh, strip the tank down fully uh, and start from scratch, maybe reuse the substrate, or we can, and we can play the long game and we can try and defeat the algae and prevent it from coming back. On my YouTube community tab, I created a poll and there was two options. We could rescape it using some free rocks uh, into a new Agumi layout, or I could treat the algae and show you guys how I do that. And it was pretty overwhelming, so you all wanted to see um, me, me treat the PPA, uh, which is actually my, uh, my, le my least favorite option. Um, but you guys are, are the audience and I'm here to kind of serve you. So that's what we're doing today. So here I've got some close-ups of the algae. Some of the plants are still fairly healthy, um, but you can see the crypts there on the edges. Got some BBA. The wood is absolutely covered with it. That was the first thing to start getting it. So I've got a few options on how to treat it and we'll go through them in more detail. Okay, so let's have a little chat about what's caused the algae. There's a few reasons and they all combine um, and the end result is the algae. Uh, I'm, I'm not a scientist, I've got no hard scientific data. Um, all, my, all my assumptions are based on experience uh, with different aquascapes, different styles of keeping aquascaping, different techniques. Uh, but BBA generally is caused by an excess of waste organics in my experience. So um, my lack of water changes, I believe, in conjunction with not necessarily the best filter in the world. It's a, a, a regular internal filter with a, a fairly small sponge and a, a fair amount of natural daylight hitting this aquarium. Now it is in my extension in my home, uh, which does have uh, large skylights and a large exterior uh, glass door. So this is a combination of lack of water changes, lack of general maintenance, uh, poor filtration, excess light has, has resulted in the BBA. I've also been away from home radically where the tank hasn't had any liquid fertilizers, very little maintenance and so you know like, like with all algae it, it tends to punish you if, if you neglect your, your aquascape. So this is what we've got. Okay, so we've got a few options to treat the BBA and one of them is to manually scrub it whilst it's in the aquarium using, probably you need a wire brush because the BBA is so stubborn on the, on the wood and the rocks. That's gonna be a real hard chore. It's gonna take us ages. It's gonna really cloud the water so we probably won't be able to see what we're doing. Another option is to treat the BBA uh, whilst it's actually running in the tank using what I call spot dosing. It's quite a popular technique. And what we use is a syringe or something similar to literally uh, dose the liquid, some liquid carbon, so Seachem Flourish XL or Easy Life Easy Carbo, loads of liquid carbon products out there. And we get a syringe of a full dose of the liquid carbon, so work out the full dose according to your aquarium size. Put that full dose in a syringe, turn your filter off, and then just gently squeeze your syringe around the area of the BBA. Uh, wait for a couple of minutes, then turn your filter back on. And the action of that, um, the, the, the liquid carbon interacting with the BBA should hopefully kill it. It will take a few days to actually, it kind of turns a pinky purple color and eventually dies off. If you've got shrimp, they tend to eat it once it's dying off as well. So the other option, and the option I'm opting for, is to actually remove all the hardscape, taking all the rocks and the wood out of the aquarium. And I've prepared a bucket of hot water and thin bleach. So we've used about two litres of thin bleach and about eight litres of uh, hot tap water. And we literally just put the rocks and the wood in there to soak for a good hour or so whilst I address the aquarium. And then what we can do is give it a really thorough rinse and scrub off any remnants of the algae and that's going to absolutely ensure all the BBA will be killed off. Okay so we've got some thin bleach, this is two litres for 45 pence from a very well known supermarket, really cheap, probably one of the best cleaning products you can get for aquariums in my experience. Childproof lid, luckily I'm strong enough to get over that and then we just pour 
I said two litres earlier, but I'm gonna probably put half of it in. So yeah, that's about right, about a litre. It is bleach, so do be careful, it is harmful. It will um, harm your skin if, you, if it touches your skin, so you might wanna use gloves. Okay, so now it's time to put a hardscape in this bucket of diluted bleach. So I've got my rubber glove here, health and safety, just move those shrimp out of the way. Try to remove the, the hardscape carefully because it is going to lift a load of organic waste from the substrate into the water column. Bit of wood. Absolutely covered in BBA. Horrible stuff. Most people watching this video will probably experience BBA at some point, black brush algae in their aquarium. I get it. And it, to me, it's just a real good indicator of you know spending enough time maintaining your tank or growing your plants properly. Lots of theories out there, what causes it. Basically, if you look after your tank properly, appropriately, you shouldn't really get BBA. So now we've freed up the, the aquascape in terms of there's no hardscape in the way, so we can really focus now on um, the issues of the plants. So I'm just gonna leave this in the kitchen now to soak whilst I'm doing all this. And then by the time this is finished, the BBA would have been killed off completely by the bleach. Okay, so we've got a few options on how we address the BBA on the plants. Thankfully, a lot of the plants are still super healthy and haven't got any BBA on them at all. Some have got a little bit and some are absolutely covered. So what I'm gonna do is trim the worst affected leaves and just take them out of the aquarium. That's gonna promote new growth, hopefully healthy new growth, which will be BBA free. The stem plants at the back, they're actually not too bad and they do need a trim anyway so what I'm going to do I'm going to try an experiment I'm going to trim them down to about a third of the way up and then hopefully the new growth will be really healthy and BBA free and plus we'll get a, a super bushy appearance because everywhere you trim from on a stem plant it grows two new shoots so it is a bit of an experiment um, I am prepared to accept the risk that it might fail and we'll just where we'll never defeat the BBA or we'll just return, in which case I'll probably just start from scratch and use some different techniques. Um, but it's all learning for me as well as for you guys. You know, I'm learning lessons and hopefully passing them on to you so everyone's a winner. So first step, I think I am going to trim the Helianthum tunnelum and the Monte Carlo. Um, loads of new growth though. Um, it, it proves that the, the lighting is strong enough, the substrate's good enough, the fertilizers are good enough, even without CO2, to grow a nice carpet. Unfortunately, obviously, it's just covered in the BBA. Okay, so using my wave scissors, these are really cool. We can just pick off the worst leaves. They'll float to the surface, and then we can just net them off. Got a little bit of java fern here. The actual leaves are fairly, fairly clean, and we've just got some BBA on the roots. I could just pick them off and then siphon that out later. Okay, some of the cryptocarani leaves are covered, the edges in particular. I'm just going to pinch them off with my fingers, nice and easy. And then any unhealthy leaves, any leaves with cuts on them or holes, I tend to remove. And the reason for that is, if the plant is damaged in any way, the plant will spend a lot of its energy trying to repair that damage. But you, you, the, the plant is actually better off putting more energy into growing new, new leaves, new healthier leaves. So any less than perfect leaves I normally tend to get rid of. Okay, so we literally just work our way down to the bottom of the bottom third of the stems and then just cut. Be quite brutal with it. Okay, we need to take the floating cuttings off the surface of the aquarium now. So we can just literally grab them and then put them in our bucket. Can actually see what we're doing better now. Okay, now it's a case of giving the aquarium glass a really good clean using our Denelay Clean Ator. Love these sponges. Getting right down to the substrate line there. Our algae tends to build up. You can give the plants a really good wave. Hopefully, it's going to dislodge any collected detritus into the water column. And then we do a big water change dilute all of that organic waste that's escaped into the water. Really important to follow up with a large water change. Talk about this all the time in my videos, but it's worth reiterating. 
dilute that organic waste otherwise it will build up and you will get algae that's exactly what's happened here but the fish and the shrimp are really healthy the shrimp are breeding I'm going to give the filter a clean as well for obvious reasons sucking in all that rubbish right now I have kept the fish in here during this process there is plenty of room for them to hide I think the stress of moving them into another tank temporarily or a bucket or whatever would probably exceed the stress of what's going on right now so I've decided to leave them in there it saves a lot of time and a lot of effort as well okay now we're ready for our water change so first thing is unplug the filter and the heater so use the opportunity to get rid of as much of that organics as you can see those waste organics collected there in the foreground Okay, so we've emptied about two thirds of the water, topped it up to about two thirds, and now it's time to replace with our hardscape, which has been soaking for about an hour in a bleach solution. I've given it a thorough rinse, and I've also soaked it in some dechlorinated double dose tap water. So I can't exactly remember how it was, but I'm just gonna place the rocks where I think look good. I must have a little bit of a change as well. Always we'll start off with the biggest, work our way down in size. Seems like there's an appropriate gap about here. Don't worry too much if you crush a couple of plants. And now we've got our final stone and there's a perfect place. I think this is where it was before, on the left. Okay, now it's time to put our wood in. Again, start off with our biggest piece. Okay guys, so we've maintained the tank, we've got rid of all the BBA, well, 95% of it. There's still some left on the carpeting plants at the front. Um, we've trimmed the stem plants right back, we've done a huge water change, we've cleaned the filter, and as you can see, uh, the BBA is dead from the wood. It turned white, but that, that's gonna disappear in a few days. So to prevent it from happening again, it's just regular maintenance, keeping on top of uh, daily fertilizers to keep those plants super healthy. The super healthy plants will in turn hopefully prevent the BBA from coming back. Limiting waste organics, so we need to do that via our regular water changes, keeping the filter fairly clean, not overfeeding the fish. And just basically little and often maintenance sessions, that's the, I think that's going to be the key to keeping the BBA, BBA away. So I hope you've enjoyed that video guys, if you have give us a like, give us a comment if you can, subscribe if you haven't already and keep on scaping. Take care, cheerio.